Carl Fegner, co-author of the Growing Deep and Strong series and a Bible life coach. Let me explain now the format of the books, of how each uh, book or the module is presented to the disciple from you, the coach. What takes place is, we, and we want to uh, we want to touch all their senses. So we want them to be able to hear it, we want them to be able to see it, and we want them to be able to feel it and touch it in that sense. So we want to touch all of their senses. So what takes place in each topic, and this is, this is I'll, I'll just use this manual here, laying the foundation, and uh, this is session four, why Jesus came. So the first part of this, on covering the topic of why Jesus came, is that the presenter, or you, the coach, present the topic in a verbal message and uh, this in here and what we do sorry what we do at the top of it is we say the estimated presentation time is 30 minutes so for you you just read this out so it's just picking it up and reading it straight out of the book and as we ask that you stick to the script because we want to get a particular message across to them so in this session it goes in this session we want to look at why Jesus Christ came we will include one how god originally designed man to operate most efficiently remember the maker's manual from session one two what happened when man fell three why jesus christ had to come to earth as a human and four how god through jesus christ has restored man's mandate to exercise his authority or dominion which with which he was created. So you just read straight out of the manual there. Now that's the coach's manual. In that section for the, in the disciple's manual, what the disciple has is this page here, and in this page here, it's just for them to take notes. So they've got the headings, they've got the Bible verses in there, and then they've got here if they want to take notes. Now some people are note takers and that's how they receive information. Others are just audio and don't take notes. So don't feel under pressure if some people don't take notes. Some, just some are note takers, some are audio, and some are visual. So they will take it and absorb it in whatever way they want. So that's that session. The next part of what happens is when, when you've um, uh, read through that, and this is by the way is a one-way one -way dialogue, it's not open for discussion yet. You just want to present them the topic. So once you uh, finish with the, uh, the topic, let me just come to the page. Uh, this finishes off with uh, what the next topic is going to be. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's the third person, the Godhead. And, and next session will be a really exciting one as we find out more about who he is. So the verbal presentation concludes there. What takes place at that stage, the disciple goes home and over the period of what we recommend a week, it's uh, better to not go any longer than that and any quicker than that's a bit too short. The disciple goes home and they have their own personal discovery. And we've headed this up, is in the personal discovery. So we've headed this up here, personal discovery, with a little fellow over here digging for gold, because that's what effectively doing. So we put there in the, in the disciples' manual, the estimated time for the disciples to complete the personal discovery is 65 minutes, so they need to spread over the week, or ideally we recommend they spread over the week. This becomes their Bible study. So they start to work their way through that. We put some dialogue in it, but mostly it's Bible verses on that and when they go to the Bible verses we've got it here turn to Matthew 1 21 to 23 we've page numbered this in here so if they're learning and new to the Bible they can uh, the page number is there for them to help them as they're growing in the Bible they look up the Bible verse then they fill out the blanks that are in it so they're actually touching and feeling and reading the Bible verses that are there so they continue, the next, the next stage in here is a question, is read the footnote, what does the name Jesus mean? And then from verse 23, what does Emmanuel mean? Why was he given this name in verse 21? So there's questions for them to fill out. So they work their way through the week on that. Next time you meet, this is what takes place. Um, you have a section at the back of your book. Let me just pick this up. 
and we covered this earlier, this is the what we call the personal discovery review. So this personal discovery review has a set of questions there. What does the name Jesus mean? And it's page numbered. So you've got your page number and their page number as well as to, for them to reference to, to what page you want to do. In your book, all of the answers are there. So we just said earlier, what does the name Jesus mean? The answer we're looking for is Jesus means Yahweh is salvation. From verse 23, what does Emmanuel mean? God with us. And then why was he given this name in verse 21? Because he would save his people from their sins. So your book has all the answers, so it makes it very easy to be a coach in running the Growing Deep and Strong series, because all of the answers are there. Now, let me just come back a second in the session. All the way through these manuals, these manuals have been written to be without David Searle or Carl Fechner. We've, we've pl planned them and created them that, that you can just pick these up off the shelf and start teaching people. So here on the personal discovery review, we're giving you notes to the coach. And the notes to the coach is, your role is to facilitate and encourage discussion on the personal discovery. Avoid being sidetracked into other topics that are not relevant to the session. You can arrange another time to answer other questions. Two, allow disciples to answer the questions or discuss without forcing them to talk. The atmosphere you want is, is one of willing participation rather than one belonging to a formal classroom. The numbers in brackets, and we're talking down there, the numbers in brackets refer to the page where the question is found. The first number is for this coach's manual, while the other number in brackets is the page in the disciples' manual. Four, if you find any are having difficulty completing the personal discovery, follow them up personally and find out what they may be struggling with. Be available to help them in, to complete it. Remember, encouragement is powerful. So we've set these up for all, step by step, guide by, uh, page by page, layer by layer, for you to be able to teach them. I hope that's making sense. Also, so then, sorry, come back to this. You're talking, walking through the questions, dialoguing with that. Their manual has the same situation or the same questions in the back of it. So they've got the same questions in that. And I would actually, um, when I finish, I found that when I finish the presentation and they're about to go home and do their own personal discovery or personal studies, is that I say to them, these are the questions, these are the things that we're looking for you to know and learn and understand out of that. I, and I recommend you probably follow the same way, is, is to help them on that. So this is the questions and this is what we want them to learn out of that topic. Now, also in yours, we've written down there, down the bottom, don't forget to sign off the dis disciples' personal discovery. So what's taking place? is here. Congratulations, you've successfully uh, completed this uh, week's personal discovery. Now, there's some interesting things that take place. This is very important psychologically. One is, let me just get it for you. If you remember, we were talking about these, the certificates of completion. We've shown them, or I would recommend that you show them at the completion. They get a certificate of recognition that they can pin up on their wall, so it gives them incentive to, to be able to do the course because they know that, that that's going to take place, the recognition. The other thing is with, it, uh, with this, what we found is that by signing this off and, and we could determine that they, hadn't, uh, that they had completed the, the, the course or the, that week's session. And so if they hadn't completed it, we would then give us the opportunity to, to start to discuss with them why they hadn't. Now sometimes in early in, when you're starting this off early in the piece and you've got a group of four or five people, someone might not be that interested in doing it and they're sort of half-hearted about the whole thing or don't really want to do it or laziness or whatever reasons is we're found by signing off on the others in the group and then we can't sign theirs, it puts a peer pressure on them in a manner 
that's not controlling or manipulating. There's just a natural cycle that takes place where they just they just naturally gravitate to real or to or realizing that they need to complete this. We found it's a very powerful tool, and we recommend that you use it. Please don't sign it off if they haven't completed the course. You're not doing your disciple any favors at all. Okay. So once you've once you've presented um, uh, this, you then go on to your next session. So after this one, why Jesus came, you've got your colour divider there, and this one is Holy Spirit. So here, you start the next session. So you present, and this one again says estimated presentation time, 35 minutes. So it takes you 35 minutes to, to read this. You present the topic, release them to go home and do the study. So you just keep repeating the cycle over and over again. We also would recommend that with this, in your preparation before the topic, before you verbally present that, that you do read this out aloud or read through this yourself so when you come in to do it, you're not stumbling over it while you're trying to read it out. I trust that makes sense on how the modules are broken.